Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, as I just mentioned, I will restate this for the recording now that it's on. We are recording this uh, meeting and we will be posting it on our YouTube channel. Um, if you have any concerns about being on YouTube, feel free to turn your camera off and post any comments in the chat and I'm happy to read them off. Um, what we are doing right now is we have a great group of folks here who are introducing themselves in the chat. Um, if you haven't already done so, please give your name and where you are joining the meeting today from and what your connections between Wikipedia and education are. Um, it looks like we've got a, a large group of people um, from, I'm going to just read off the, um, the places everyone is joining us from. Um, Nicole is joining us from the Wikimedia Foundation, Sao Paulo, Edinburgh, Basque region, Oakland, California, um, a wiki and job is in session, so we might be re missing representation. I did not obviously check the calendar on that one. Um, Poland, Toronto, Serbia, Netherlands slash Germany, Nigeria, Uganda, Wikimedia UK, Wikimedia Foundation, Nigeria, another Nigeria, United States and Brazil, lots of great, uh, great representation. Wales, there we go. Okay. Um, from, from India, but joining from Kigali. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you everyone from joining. Um, I will, I will do an introduction of myself and, um, and maybe the, the other board members of the user group can, um, can do quick introductions of themselves as well. Um, so my name is Leanna Davis. I am based in California in the United States. Um, and I am the chair of the Wikipedia and education user group. Um, I think I know most of you, but for those of you who don't know me, I've been part of this movement for, uh, um, I guess, 12 years now. Um, and in uh, my day job, I work with Wiki Education, which is the organization that runs the education program in the United States and Canada. And I'm happy to be here today and see so much representation from all over the world, um, except for my uh, mistake in scheduling it during Wiki and Dava to, uh, to, to not allow that particular representation to join. Um, so we have, um, this is a combination meeting, um, and so uh, it's both our general assembly, which happens every two years for our user group. So let me uh, introduce my fellow board members. It looks like Susanna's not here, um, so I will jump to Zico next. Zico, do you want to say a couple words about yourself, um, and, then I, and then we can pass it on. Hello. Yes, well, I, I would like to uh, especially thank Liana for all the great work on the board for the last uh, years. Yes, two very crazy years in which everything we did, we had to do in a different way. Um, but education is still so important uh, because you can combine it in such a wonderful way with uh, Wikipedia and all the other wikis. Uh, I, for example, I am linked to the Clexicon for which we are funding and we are going to export it to other languages. And we are now on the way to that and on the board. Well, I would be interesting can we in future make more with the working groups that we have in theory or when it comes to multilingualism uh, to engage more people in our work and uh, it would be great if it could be possible for 2023 um, to go on with a little uh, idea of mine with a document about education standards and the Wikimedia movement so what kind of behavior or values, etc., are well should be important to all of us when it comes to the combination of education on the one hand and Wikipedia on the other hand. So I'm very curious what is going to happen, and I'm very curious on our guest speaker tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Zico. Uh, Philip. Hi, everyone. I'm Philip from Serbia. I've been involved with uh, Wikipedia and Wikimedia since 2004 or five and with education programs even then um and yeah i mean I've, i'm just a, a a board member i've been a board member of this user group since its beginning um so it's been a a, a long and an interesting ride these past four years um but uh, but yeah uh, it's um I, I find this um, user group and, and its activities very useful and and 
um, I think that uh, we can benefit from from involvement of more people. That's what we, we've been trying to do. And uh, uh, Liana might say a few words later in her presentation about that. Um, <clears throat> so I, I don't want to spoil anything right now. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I'm sure that we will succeed in that uh, in the following year. Okay, thank you, Philip. Um, and Joao messaged me that he is on the subway, and so he can't turn on his mic right now. But um, Joao has is joining us here, and he is our membership admin. So um, he's the one who processes your membership. If you aren't already a member, I encourage you to join. Um, so the agenda today is it's a half general assembly and a half um, open meeting. We do our open meetings. We tend to do them kind of every other month, although we will skip them for things like um, Wikimania or things like that, where we want to encourage education participation in, in those events. Um, so it's been a while since we had one. Um, <clears throat> But we just decided to do a joint meeting this time to see how that works. Um, so we've got Ewan here who will be presenting on um, on the connections he's he's done between Wikidata and education, um, which we're really excited about. Um, Wikidata's 10th birthday was on Saturday. Um, I hope you all celebrated um, with cake. Uh, I certainly did. Um, I love Wikidata and I hope all of you do too. Um, and so I'm excited to, to hear his presentation, but um, I also want to get into our our, um, our general assembly stuff first, and then we'll move into that, um, the open meeting part of, um, of the meeting today. Um, so I will start by doing a little slide deck that I put together here. Let me share it. Okay, hopefully all of you can see this. Um, so this is a short slide deck that covers the activities of our user group um, in the last two years since we've had um, the last General Assembly. So I'm going to cover five different um, pieces here. First is an update on our membership. The second is um, covering our open meetings. The third is a discussion of the EduWiki conference. Um, the fourth is our participation in the Wikimedia strategy process. And the fifth is an update on the mentorship program, which I think some of you are participating in. Oops, and I clicked off there. Okay, so our membership since our last General Assembly at the end of 2020, which is when our last uh, General Assembly was, we had 194 members in the support of 19 affiliates. And currently we have 223 members in the support of the same 19 affiliates. Um, so this makes us one of the largest user groups in the Wikimedia universe, um, but it has certainly been a challenge to people get, keep people engaged and participating in our events. Um, so I'm sure part of this has to do with the pandemic and, um, and engaging with things in an online space is always um, a bit of a challenge, but um, I certainly encourage you uh, to, to, uh, to encourage your fellow colleagues in the Wikipedia and education space to um, to get engaged in the user group and um, and help uh, help us continue to grow and stay active. Um, if you're not currently a member or if your affiliate organization is not currently a member, I encourage you to join us. Um, there's a, a link there to our meta page, um, Wikipedia and education user group slash members, um, and that has the full list of all of the usernames of folks who are members and the affiliates who are members. And so um, Joao is our membership admin. He um, regularly processes the applications that come in and and um, we look forward to having you join us if you are not already. Um, open meetings. So since our last General Assembly, we've had six open meetings featuring education program leaders globally sharing their work. Um, this slide has a screenshot from our YouTube channel. Um, we record the meetings as we're recording this one. And we post all of our meetings um, onto that YouTube channel because we know this time zone doesn't work for everyone. We are a global movement and we are a global user group. And so if this time is not convenient for you, um, you can also watch the recording of the meeting afterwards. Um, and you can see we get a handful of views on our, our open meeting uh, videos. So it looks like um, some people do participate that way. Um, and finally, or, or not finally, I have a few more slides after this, the EduWiki conference. So you may know this was originally planned for October 2022 or October 2020. Um, 
But given the global health situation, we decided we could not do that. Um, and so we postponed it. We briefly discussed having it as a virtual event, but we decided we wanted to keep it an in-person event because we found the value of in-person connection, sharing, and learning to be incredibly high. And we wanted to... Um, to make sure we had an in-person meeting. Um, so we just reapplied for grant funding and we actually found out yesterday that we were approved for it. Um, so our, uh, our grant request from the Wikimedia Foundation was funded yesterday, which means we are in the um, go phase of planning a uh, global education conference, the EduWiki conference in April or May of 2023 with our friends from Wikimedia Serbia, um, who will be the host country. So it will be in um, in Belgrade, Serbia. Um, it's a beautiful city. If you've never been, um, I have and I loved it and I look forward to going back again. Um, so many thanks to Philip and all of the Wikimedia Serbia colleagues for their hard work on putting together the budget and finding a location and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I imagine there will be much more work to come in in the the next few months as we uh, as we actually uh, get started on this. But look for information soon on a program, on scholarships, on um, dates uh, to hold for on your calendar, things like that, um, as we figure out kind of the, the process on this. And um, I would like to be able to announce all of that right now. Um, we, given we were approved of this less than 24 hours ago, we have not yet met to sort of figure out what all of that looks like. But um, we are really excited to bring together the global education community um, in April or May of next year in an in-person meeting. Um, and I think Galder is on here. He was on here earlier anyways. He um, and the Basque user group put on the last education conference and it was wonderful. And we will see if we can um, match or top the uh, the wonderful hospitality and um, and program that, that the Basque user group put on. Um, it will be a steep challenge, but um, hopefully we are up to it. So I look forward to engaging with all of you, um, hopefully in person uh, in a few months. And then um, the Wikimedia strategy process. So as you all know, we are in the middle of the Wikimedia 2030 strategy process. There was, um, we had as a user group, a December 2020 implementation priorities session where we identified our user groups, um, top areas of interest, and um, members of the board have been continuing to participate in the various Zoom sessions. Um, I attended as the user group's representative the Wikimedia Summit in Berlin um, in September. It was a really great opportunity to advance our sort of user group's interest in the value of education and Wikimedia as part of the global strategy in particular. We had an education meetup where we discussed the possibility of an education thematic hub. Um, if you guys are not familiar with the hubs process, it is one of the things that came out of the strategy process as an opportunity to create um, groups of um, interest areas. And I think it would be a natural transition to shift our user group into being an education hub. Um, so we're in discussions around kind of what that would look like and um, and how that might play out based on kind of the hubs discussion, but it's something that we're following very closely. And then finally, the mentorship program. Um, so some of you participated in this either in 2021 or in our pilot year, we had 17 people who signed up to either be a mentor or a mentee. And um, Philip did an amazing job of pairing people up. And we had a really great success. Um, we, from our feedback survey, people really appreciated the mentorship program and the opportunity to connect with an education program leader who was more experienced for the mentees or to be able to give back to the education community and a mentorship role for the mentors themselves. Um, so we expanded it into a larger program this year. Um, we have 36 participants in this Google um, Doc screenshot right here is the amazing color coding job Philip did trying to match people um, who what they were interested in kind of meeting what their programs were. We collected lots of information about um, people for this to try to match them with people. And um, Philip did a really great job um, putting matching people up so that we had um, the right number of people 
serving as mentors and the right number of people serving as mentees. And so um, I think some of you are participating in the mentorship program right now. Um, I hope it's going well. We've been um, regularly following up with people to just um, nudge um, conversations into happening. So um, hopefully you are getting a lot out of um, your mentor and mentor mentee relationship. And we'll be following up um, early next year to kind of encourage you to either keep that relationship going or um, see if we want to do another round of that. And that has been the major activities that we have had going on. I'll pause here to see if there are any questions. Feel free to either just unmute yourself and ask or put something in the chat. Yes, I agree. The Basque Educate, EduWiki conference was awesome. Okay, hearing no questions, I'm going to move on to the next part of the meeting then, which is our board elections process. So um, all five of us, um, the, the four, four of us who introduced ourselves, me, Zico, Philip, and Joao, as well as Susanna, who couldn't be here today, um, are, have been the board members for the last two years. We are all happy to run again and serve in our roles for another two-year term. Um, I did send an email out to the membership list about a month ago seeking um, any additional candidates who wanted to put themselves forward. Um, nobody did. Um, and so I believe we are running unopposed for um, this particular election. Um, and the um, Nicole says she didn't see the email. It went out to the member list. Nicole, are you a member? I believe I should be a member. I was I'm I'm listed in the original. Okay. Um, but I wonder, Liana, if um if there was enough outreach done, because I think there's a lot of interest in joining the leadership of the um of the user group. I know that we've heard from folks around the community. Um, and just in terms of like representation of different parts of the world, mm -hmm. um, it seems like maybe more can be done to be inclusive of others. And, um, you know, I know this, this, uh, the bylaws say the General Assembly is the time for the election, but I think we would have liked to have seen like more instruction on how to run, how to, you know, nominate yourself. I don't think we saw anything like that. So just, um, just kind of a, a thought that, you know, we don't have anyone on the board from Sub-Saharan Africa, from, you know, um, from ECAP region. And it seems like, it would be a good idea to try to be a little bit more uh, inclusive. Yeah, I certainly hear that. Um, is If there's anyone who's on this meeting who wants to put themselves forward, what we have done is um, we've created an opportunity that if you want to write in a candidate um, on the form, then that would be an opportunity to write someone in. Um, so if anyone wants to put themselves forward now, um, I certainly want to be inclusive of anyone. And if I apologize if anyone missed that email. Um, I can um, pull up sort of when I sent it to just confirm that it did go out, but um, I think it was about a month ago. Um, but but let me, uh, yeah, let me let me fix that by saying if anyone wants to put themselves forward um, now, the way we have set up this form for the election, let me explain it a little bit. So um, many of you know Shani, she was one of our founding board members and she serves as a Wikimedia Foundation board member. She couldn't be at the meeting today, but she is the one who's going to, she continues to serve as a special advisor for our user group. And she is um, the one who will be tabulating the results of the election since she is not a board member herself. Um, so uh, we have a form here. The what, what it does is it asks you for your username. It asks you to confirm you're a member of the user group. And then um, it asks you if you want to vote for the entire slate of us who are rerunning. And if you click no on that, there's an opportunity for you to write in the five candidates you would like to vote for for the election. So if somebody um, 
does want to put themselves forward here in the meeting, um, we're happy to entertain that and give the opportunity for anyone who is here to suggest that they would like to um, to run for a position and talk a little bit about themselves. So um, I'm happy to pause right here and um, and let you put yourself forward. And if you'd prefer to do it in the chat, that's fine too. You don't need to turn a camera on. Yes, you can nominate someone, but they need to accept. I want to give enough time to let somebody step forward or nominate someone, but I also don't want to have us just sitting here uh, for a while if no one is interested. Okay, we have a nomination. Um, Bukola James, are you on the call? I saw Bacola was here earlier, but it looks like she might have lost connection. Okay. Does do you know if she's interested and willing to serve? I believe I believe she is interested. Um, I can ping her and see if uh, if she's still online. Okay. I will also apologize while we're here. Um, there is road construction going on outside my house. So I'm not sure if you can hear the jackhammer or if my microphone is luckily not picking it up. Okay, good. <laughs> it's, it's very loud. Okay, well, while we are waiting um, to see, let me explain the process for this. So during COVID, we um, we had agreed to do, I mean, our, we, we had originally stated in our bylaws that the vote would just happen at the General Assembly and it would be whoever was there would vote. Um, during COVID, we decided we would open it up for a week instead, and I think we're going to keep that the same um, this time. So um, I will post the link to the um, the form in the chat here, and um, it, you can choose to vote. Um, or any five people that you are interested in, um, in supporting. So um, the five of us are all putting ourselves forward to rerun. If you choose no on that, there will be an open text box and you can put in the five names of people um, that you would be um, interested in voting for. Okay, so Nicole is saying here that um, Bacola says she's willing to serve. And the positions, we just have the, um, the five we how how this works is we the the membership elects the five um particular um board members and then um we sort of assign the actual roles within the group based on people's interest and availability um and that kind of thing so i imagine which position um Bukul is interested in would be depending on you know, which, which, depending on which five people end up um, in that role, we would sort of reshuffle the, um, reshuffle the responsibilities based on interest. Yeah. So let me um, go ahead and uh, paste that in there. Um, so this link will be open 
um, beginning now for one week from today. And um, Shani will be the one who will look over the results of it and who will announce the um, the winners uh, into the membership list in another uh, after after that one week is over. Um, and so there are the to to just go over this again, there are the possibility of the um, five of us who are currently members, or there is also the possibility we have one um, write-in candidate who has put um, themselves forward or has been nominated to, put, <laughs> to be put forward, um, Macola James. So if you are interested um, in voting, um, you're certainly also welcome to write someone else in. I don't want to limit it to just the, the people that we have here. Um, so if you know of someone else or you yourself are interested but haven't put, um, put yourself forward, this is a good opportunity to, um, to do so. Any questions about uh, the this? Oh, it looks like Bukola was just able to rejoin. Bukola, it looks like um, you've been nominated to um, to serve on the board. Do you want to say a little bit about who you are and um, and your experience so you can? Uh, you can campaign to, to, to join the board. I'm putting you on the spot here at the last minute. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so like uh, speechless right now. I don't know what to say. Um, good evening, everyone. It's evening here in Nigeria. And yes, my name is uh, Bukola Olusola James and I, I see this nomination as a very big one for me because um, coming from uh, joining Wikimedia Foundation in 2020 and um, trying my uh, possible best to see that um, not, just, not just promoting glam alone, but trying to um, uh, promote uh, the, the, the use of open education resource especially as it has to do with using Wikipedia as a learning tool, um, was something that I'm very, I was very passionate about. And yes, coming into the EduWiki as uh, a collaborator, I said as a collaborator, I was um, part of those who post, who share your newsletters, who make sure that your newsletters are, um, are they, they receive the publicity that they deserve. and um, Coming through there and getting to the point that I had to organize program for over 70 teachers, even uh, with the little experience that I had, because I, I just joined uh, the Wikimedia community not up to three years. And with the little experience I had and being part of the first COT has really exposed me to a whole lot that I feel uh, we really need to talk about. There, there is a whole lot that we need to do in terms of um, promoting open education resource. Because um, while I was doing my TOT, I did a whole lot of research about how the educational policy here in Nigeria was not really um, embracing open education resource. They were more about uh, promoting um, open uh, promoting e-learning, online learning, but bringing reading Wikipedia to the classroom and being the first person to implement has really exposed me to a whole lot and has really helped change the, uh, the narrative of what Wikipedia used to be as to what um, the, edu the, the stakeholders in the education sector need to see Wikipedia for. So me being uh, a member of the, the board, I, I see myself representing not just um, not just Nigeria, but I'm trying to put uh, the global south, like have a representative for the global south, because I feel like uh, the global south is not well represented on the board. And having a member of the board coming from the global south will make the voices, the, uh, it will make the views and voices of those in the global south to be heard. And yes, those in the global south will now be able to uh, not just uh, speak, 
but their voices will be heard and actions will be taken on whatsoever they desire that they see or whatsoever they wish the um or whatsoever they desire that uh they they want uh the um uh, their voice uh, on what sorry <laughs> sorry like I, i'm so i'm so speechless but i'm trying to uh just compose myself so that's why like, I'm not really um, in the right state of mind right now. But yes, I believe that coming, uh, being a member of the board will make the voices of those in the global south to be heard. And yes, uh, the policies, because we believe that OER, for most uh, stakeholders, they feel like OER is not reliable. It doesn't have integrity. Like uh, anybody can just put anything out there. But we need to change this narrative. We need to change the perception of education stakeholders in the global south, and most especially in Nigeria, where I uh, represent, where I come from. So I think being part of the board will really uh, make me gain a better perspective of what the um, the user group is and give a voice to those in the global south. So thank you so much. I really appreciate this nomination and. I, I, I believe that um, based on what I have done previously and what I am still doing, I, I wouldn't say I'm capable, but yes, I can represent and I will represent well. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think that was really helpful. Um, I do want to acknowledge um, Joao's presence on, on, on the board too from Brazil, um, but, but I do think it's important to have representation from different geographies and, um, and representing different, uh, different cultures. So I definitely, um, so, so I'm glad, glad you have put yourself forward um, as, as a last minute candidate here. So um, everyone feel free to fill out that form either now or over the next week if you are a member of our user group. Um, and if you're interested in voting for Bukola, please feel free to click no on the do you support um, full re-election of the slate of the current ones, and then you will get an open text field and you can write in the five candidates you're interested in voting for. So um, if you're, you can pick and choose um, from any of um, the six people who have been put forward, you can write in five of those um, from the, um, for your alternative slate of candidates. Yeah. Yes. The the bylaws also allow more than five members. So, oh, do they? Yeah. Well, see. So we can include. You can yes. include include the six. Of okay. See, Philip knows the bylaws better than I do, which is um, why it's always helpful to have multiple board members on calls like these. So yeah, I guess if you are interested in um, in nominating and having six uh, board members, you can also write in all six of us in um, in the. Uh, the the um, second uh, the, uh, open text box there. Okay, any questions? All right, hearing none, I want to move over to the open meeting part um, of this and turn it over to Ewan. Are you still here? Yes, there you are. I am. Okay, excellent. Um, you should be able to share your screen, but if you can't, let me know. Okay, uh, let's see if I can figure this out. Uh, there we go. Can you see my uh, screen? It should say University of Edinburgh Wikimedia in Residence. Yes. Okay. Um, so do you want me to, to start or, um, um, yes, jump right in, introduce okay, yourself okay. to so, tell uh, us about yeah. your work. So, yeah. Um, so my name's Ewan. I, I work as the Wikimedian in residence at the University of Edinburgh and I've been in post since January, 2016. Um, and I've, I've, I've got some slides that I'll jump into. But I just thought I'd show you the website um, because this is a website that students created for us over the last two or three years. Just explain what the history of, you know, why we're doing this uh, and trying to pull all to get the resources into a very simple, straightforward, easy to follow resource that for staff and students 
not just at our institution, but hopefully worldwide, because we've got little short videos about how to make an article that are on our Media Hopper channel and on YouTube under open license. And we have a booklet of case studies of Wikimedia in UK education that we're hopefully going to expand with six new case studies as well. But um, Wikidata, we're, we're trying to pull together the examples of Wikidata in action to sort of like really showcase what can be done with Wikidata in terms of mapping Scotland's accused witches or taking a great resource like the Aberdeen Tower, Tower Block archives, where we've got thousands of images of uh, housing developments of all over Scotland and the UK and across the world. And we've tried to sort of like do the Aberdeen Tower Blocks as a sort of case study of how we can marry images up with uh, the data and do interesting things with the data and all these images. And the Scotland's Witches also it sort of ha helped inspire the Mapping the Scottish Reformation project, showing what happened to different members of the clergy, where they were educated, where they worked, how they moved around the country. You know, shout out to the National Library of Wales and their digitised collections and other use cases like the sum of all uh, paintings. Um, so that's all on there with hopefully, sorry, there's a ambulance going past, um, with, you know, how to edit and how to process data with, you know, because a lot of people get bogged down about how to use quick statements and open refine. Anyway, so uh what uh many people were just thanking me for the open education global award and thank you for that but i i was like really pleased when hannah won her award because she got the student award last year because she spent all of lockdown creating these sort of short how-to videos and a 41 page website all in 12 weeks one summer working from her parents house and she's created a YouTube playlist and the, the website and all of these other resources that I thought I'd just mention there. So I'm going to just hop into my slides now and hope that you can still see them. Um, Liana, if you could tell me if you can see the slides. Yes. Okay. So if you're interested in the website, there's the short link which is at tinyurl.com forward slash wiki dash UOE, UOE for University of Edinburgh. Um, and you can get in contact with me if you're interested in anything I cover at those email address and Twitter handles. Although I'm not sure about Twitter anymore now that Elon Musk is in charge. Um, I, I'm going to sort of skip some of the context stuff and just get more into the meat of Wikidata. But that's what the Edinburgh University looks like. That's our vision, which we feel is um, has a lot of correlation and mutual benefit to work with Wikimedia. But the reason we were, we're working with Wikimedia because our students challenged us back in 2014 at the same time as we were having the Scottish independence referendum and having national debates about making Scotland a fairer, more inclusive, better society our student association wanted our senior managers at the university to explore how learning materials could be made open not just for students at the university but for across the scotland and the wider world so that that necessitated the senior managers discussing an open education policy which was approved in 2016 and the policy needed staff so my colleagues Lorna and Charlie were employed as open education resource service staff to encourage staff and students in the university to create and publish uh, educational resources under an open license. And uh, I work alongside them and they have their own website at opened.ac.uk where you can find our booklet of case studies. Um, but basically, we feel like this work is a multiple return on our key institutional commitments because the university, it says it wants to support open research and the sharing of knowledge openly. 
and developing of information literacy, digital skills, data skills, and improving representation of online and equality and diversity. So there are, there are key institutional commitments that hosting a Wikimedian is a multiple return on investment that we think other universities should be engaging with. Otherwise, how are they demonstrating that they're supporting these things? Um, so my role is for the whole university to just raise awareness and understanding of how Wikipedia and Wikidata works and to deliver and design data skills and Wikipedia skills events and training sessions inside and outside the curriculum and just explore how we can get our colleagues, staff and students to benefit from and contribute to these uh, great projects. Um, so sometimes that involves going over to colleagues of the Eurostem cells to help them with Eurostem cell awareness day and getting them to create and improve Wikipedia articles. But a big part of what we want to do at the university is also we've been given money from the Scottish government and given the responsibility to create a new data literate workforce to support Scotland's growing digital economy. The Scottish government wants about 10,000 data literate students to come out of uh, the university over the next 10 years. And we feel like Wikipedia and Wikidata can be a big part of that over the next 10 years. Um, and in terms of how that manifests itself, um, I was invited to uh, a data fair that happens on the Design Informatics MA course program, where the data fair takes place every October, and they ask what they call data holders or problem holders um, from all across Scotland to come and pitch in three minutes a, a data set for the master's students on that course to work with in groups of three. So you have 15 data sets or data problem holders, maybe from the National Records of Scotland or the National Library of Scotland or different research data sets from across the university or different universities or even data sets from the Scottish government themselves are all pitched to the students to see what they can do over six, seven weeks from October to December in, in solving a, a problem with the data or doing a creative visualization with the data. And this sort of what the students have come up with in the past, you can find at that datafairs.github link. Because what we want is to have data literate students that have real world experience of working with real world data sets. And there's no substitute for working um, practically with data sets and processing and visualizing the data. And it, we just need to get away from the theoretical understanding of data science to so something much more malleable and uh, processing of the data into something that can be worked with. So at the moment, I, I met yesterday with two groups yesterday because I pitched the idea of Wiki Loves Monuments data because there's what something like 2.8 million images shared in the last 12 years for Wiki Loves Monuments. And there's data on Wikidata about all this cultural heritage. Um, and I, I estimate that Scotland's got about 1,500 images that have coordinates and a date associated with them, and another 13,000 that have uh, a Canmore heritage identifier and an image link. So the data can be vastly improved and worked with to tell the story of Scotland's heritage, either in map form or data videos or uh, timelines. So that's what they're working on for October to December just now. But one of the, the most prominent examples of a data set I've pitched over the last few years is the survey of Scottish witchcraft which is a database that was in, in Microsoft Access that was created in 2003. And it, the Microsoft Access database is really rich. It's got 300 uh, fields, 300 columns of information organized into about 30 different tables, but it's quite a static data set that's not really, um, been fully explored in the way it could be. So what we wanted to do was take 
the very textual information in that Microsoft Access database and turn it into linked open data in Wikidata and see if we could open it up for further research and inquiry. And some of the challenges uh, that we've done over the years is trying to plot the different accused witches in space and time, like find geographic locations for the accused witches because the Microsoft Access data set only had the name of the place that they were residing in. Um, so what we wanted to do was get a student to look at old National Library of Scotland geo-referenced maps to see if we could get the name and match it up with an approximate coordinate location. So we've added uh, geographical locations, coordinates and temporal data to Wikidata, and we've also now added who named who, the sort of McCarthy witch trial aspect of the, the fact that the accused were tortured to name other people, and some people named up to 60 others. So we've added those links into Wikidata. We've also, we've tried to add in information about Satan, uh, but what we found is that they there were very long sentences describing the devil's appearance that weren't perfect for Wikidata, but we have added, we've used other complementary data in Wikidata to create visualizations about, because we've got the accused witches in location and date form, we can plot descriptions of the devil on a map and space and time and say, say, and show how that evolved in Scotland in the 16th, 17th, 18th century. We've added types of torture, trials of ordeal, network analysis of who the most influential accused witches and judges and witch prickers were, accusations of shape changing, the types of ritual objects that were supposedly used by these accused witches. And there's also other things that I've pitched that we still need to do. The, the, the family relationships could be better explored and the complaints that the accused made and the types of malice that they was accused by different um, accusers. There's still so much more we could add. Um, but the students come up with creative um, ideas about how to visualize the data. It doesn't always have to be in a digital format either. So here's an example of three students who created a laser cut, a wooden map, um, which is three dimensional in that you can put the map down and put in three dimensional pieces that slot into square holes or circular holes or hexagonal holes that show um, in three dimensions the gender of the accused witches for each region. Where and it, you know, obviously it was 85% women. So there's always the, the sort of the, the female uh, three-dimensional tower is a lot taller than the men for each region. But it also important it was important to visualize that the witchcraft pat hammock happened because the women were accu uh, accused and then tortured into naming other names so that 3,000 to 4,000 other people were brought into these witch trials in what was a really dark period in Scotland's history. And I like this quote um, about open data. Educators who make use of open data in teaching and learning encourage students to think as researchers, as journalists, as scientists, and as policymakers and activists. And that's what we encourage our students to be, activists of knowledge. They also provide a meaningful context for gaining experience in research workflows and processes, as well as learning good practice in data management, analysis, and reporting. So open data and working with real world data sets is essential, we think, to um, it helping deliver these di data literate, digital literate students. Um, because of the work out we did on these course, doing little pockets of work over six weeks, we were able to um, leverage funding to host um, our first student intern, Emma. For She just worked for 12 weeks to, to actually go look at the geographical locations and spend, she was at La Witchfinder General and looking at these old maps in the National Library of Scotland. And then we needed a home 
to put her map visualization. So we created a website. It has leaflet maps that has filters for gender, social class, occupations, and the trial locations, and so on. And that map uh, site, it kind of exploded. We only launched it after Emma's seminar in September 2019. And suddenly, like, we were getting um, inquiries from media organizations, but also people that were just exploring the witch or accused witch, I should say, who was local to them, because it really brought it really brought home that this happened everywhere, and that there were accused witches local to people all around Scotland, just down the road, who was accused of and uh, tortured and uh, strangled and put to death. So uh, it's a really great way of opening data to bring historical data to life and. Emma's spent three years answering questions about this, even though she stopped in September 2019. And she did a TEDx talk at St. Andrews University earlier this year that you can watch. It's just a 12 minute talk, but she's really articulate and brilliant on the topic of the power of open data to bring historical data to life. And can you see that at tinyurl.com, witchy Emma. Um, but Three years later, we've had another in, intern this summer, Maggie Lynn, but we, we think of her more as a witchcraft investigator because she was adding really rich information to Wikidata about the witchcraft investigations. And she recently talked on the World According to Wikipedia podcast just last week that you can hear at tinyurl.com, which she Maggie. Um, so the current site that is live is the one that Emma worked on three years ago, but we now have a new test site that it ha has lots of the data that Maggie added, which is at that test link, test.witches. And what Maggie added was all the shape changing, ritual objects, witches meeting places, types of demonic packs, the other criminal charges, the calendar customs, and who denounced who. And because of that, all of that rich data is in Wikidata now. We can, have, we can ex it looks more like this, where you can explore a timeline and the different panics. And there all, is also a Histropedia timeline. And I'll, I'll, if I have time, I'll show you the site now as well. But we also have dynamic network analysis using Gephi showing all the different case involvements, the trial mentions, a timeline to see through the years, and filtering for the types of primary and secondary characteristics in the witchcraft investigations about which ones are most characterized by demonic possession, for example. So I've got a I want a pony wish list to improve all that data. Um, and before it goes completely live, um, so I'm working through all of these, but and I think I'm going to get an intern to help me quality assure the data and make sure that it's accurate and that the visualizations do what we expect them to do. But we, we should be able to add these extra flourish visualizations like the devil in Scotland on the text of appearance from accused witches descriptions. Um, so... But what we really wanted to use open data for is to tell the individual human stories behind the data, because these were real people who suffered through like one of the worst episodes in Scotland's history. So I'm just going to come out of that and hopefully show you the site. And Leanna, you can tell me if I need to stop talking. Um, You've got about just... another five minutes, including oh, really? questions. Including questions. So. Okay. So I'll just, can you see the site? Yes. Okay. So this is a, a sort of, there's still some glitches on it. So it's not quite live. So it's on a test site. So the idea is that there is a sort of dynamic number that will change when I start working with the timeline. And I can look at the panic periods and non panic periods to sort of show how this spread like wildfire across Scotland. Um, it's not perfect at the minute, but the idea is that if I just 
move the dates, you'll sort of see them all disappear. And the numbers should dynamically change on the screen. Okay, and then you can click into each one and it will give you more information about all the different things that they were accused of and then link to their page on the Survey of Scottish Witchcraft website for more information. Uh, for close off that, there's filters for gender, social classification, occupation, and the ones that have a Wikipedia page. And then if I go in here, there's the timeline search. This is something that Navino Evans at Histopedia has helped us with. It's better, it's a bit squished at the minute, so we're trying to fix that. But if I make it full screen, you can now search for each accused witch by, in the, by name and then click on their page and it will have a little paragraph of text and link to their Survey of Scottish Witchcraft page, their Wikipedia page, Resonator page, and you can filter by gender, marital status, occupation, social classification. We can even add YouTube links in there if we wanted, or podcasts, and you can just zoom in a bit more to show different, and we've got changing backgrounds. And what else have we got come out of this? Uh, there's the investigations that Maggie created that shows shape-shifting and ritual objects. So you get lots of filters about the different things these uh, men and women were accused of changing into. Black dogs, bumblebees, crows, badgers, Satan, and all the different ritual objects they were supposed to have used, like corpse powder, grave earth, handkerchiefs nail trimmings etc uh, what we need is to have a, a, a select all and deselect all really for that and then you've got the named witches who named who just to show the sort of network analysis again it's not perfect because it's a bit too far down my screen at the moment but the idea is that you should be able to sort of see hover over and show all the different people named by different nodes and denounced by different people and click through to for more information. Um, but yeah, we've, we've got, we should have a contact form for hoping we're going to add contact form for people noticing anomalies in the data. And we've blogged about everything we've done over the last 12 weeks in the summer. There's Josep a student who worked on the site and Maggie who did all the data crunching in Wikidata. And thankfully um, they've also created some videos and they've done lots of presentations. There's the video about the laser cut map that I can show you, but you can also find it on our Media Hopper channel. And they've also done how to use quick statements and how to do bulk data item creation using open refine um, just to explain and make life easier for other people about the process of working with Wikidata. I think that's probably where I'll stop but that's the, those are that, that's the data fair slides that we work with when we're pitching ideas to the students and some of the different visualizations that can be done just to inspire them. So National Library of Scotland and other uh, organizations, livestock disease, evidence, landscape. It's not, it doesn't always work. So not all about working with Wikidata, but um, it's about getting them to understand data and work with it and understand it and create some interesting visualizations. So I'll stop there. Okay, well, thank you so much. That was really interesting and very neat to see um, all of the, the great projects that Wikidata can make happen um, at the university. It looks like there's a couple of questions in chat. If you could um, drop your email address in there. Um, what is the knowledge base using? Uh, the witch's website? Renee, do you want to clarify that?
I can't hear. Yeah, you. we can't hear you. Uh, but the, the the witch's website is pulling directly from Wikidata. Um, the map in the Scottish Reformation website is uh, taking is is works with a snapshot, a static uh, dump from Wikidata. Um, so that that that's posing interesting questions for me. If if because obviously Wikidata is an open editable source, so I I do want um. A, a student intend to go in and check that it's still the data we added three years ago is still what we would expect to find obviously anyone could improve the data but we just want it to make sure that the visualizations we're creating are still ending in the results that we were expecting as well because sometimes data items get merged um, and uh, that's an interesting quandary for me about how we keep that open data aspect with but also preserve some sort of data consistency okay a couple more questions is there a link to trainings for quick statements uh yeah i've got um our website has a quick statements guide in it so if i processing importing data how to use quick statements Okay. For that. Perfect. And then um, is the work described only in English or also Scots? Uh, that is something that we, we could be better at. That's another sort of, because we need more people to add more labels. So it's um, not just in Scots, but in every language so that we can uh represent the data in you know any language immediately um so but yeah at, at the moment it's mainly english i wouldn't there may have been some labels added by the wikidata community but i i, I couldn't speak to that it's probably just the properties okay and then um I have a, a question for you. I think all of us, or I, I can say, I was certainly impressed with the work that you're doing and would love to see more Wikimedians and residents at universities around the world to follow the model of the work that you're doing. Um, how can we advocate for replicating the work that you are doing at other universities around the world? Uh, I, I, it's, well, it, it's, senior it's you know i guess it's the senior managers getting the senior managers to sit up and take notice um i have a great advocate in one of the assistant principals um at the university of edinburgh who's in a senior position she's the head of it for the university of edinburgh um and she proposed this idea because she recognized that there was a whole sphere of work going on within the Wikimedia community. And she was kind of baffled that as an IT director, she didn't know much about it. And her background was at the University of Oxford where Martin Poulter, uh, who some of you will know, uh, was the Wikimedian in the Bodleian libraries. And I think what appealed to her was the, the Ada Lovelace Day event and how important it was to get more women involved in Wikimedia editing, but also in the having more biographies of women online in general. She, the representation online mattered is what occurred to her. And there was applications for teaching and learning. So she, I think it's getting the senior managers to take notice. So providing examples, like we've got our booklet of case studies, that's something we can point to. But we also have research articles that Professor Alison Littlejohn has produced in, uh, in evaluating what happens in a Wikipedia editing event or a Wikidata editing event to show that it's not just something that is othered, that it has real applications for teaching and learning. And it, there, these conversations about copyright, open access, um neutral point of view academic referencing um whose knowledge is it, these are all really important conversations for staff and students to be grappling with 
Um, so yeah, it's it's ev evident people in the room. Uh, and I, I think conferences help sometimes and getting the word out and but getting attending forums that are already happening at the university and sort of getting to, to your advocacy in right of the front uh, in in the front of the right people in and planting the seeds of an idea that they can discuss with you because I know that the chief information officer at Aberdeen University only thought of Wikipedia as something that happened in libraries, that they only had applications about uh, raising awareness of collections. And he, they don't really, they don't always think about it as having applications in teaching and learning. So you have to sort of like plant the seed and show that it's it's a worthwhile, that there there is a, there are budgets set aside that universities have for their key institutional commitments and just making sure that you tie in how Wikimedia does support those commitments in a, in a very meaningful, open way that is value for money and multiple return on investment. So for my boss would, would say to anyone, if anyone's thinking about it and saying they can't afford to do it, we would say you can't afford not to because it, it takes you into so many areas that are so going to be so much more important going forward. And we have sustainable development goals as well that we want to, that, that Wikimedia support as well. So it's tying all those things in and getting the right people to listen and saying like, it's, this, is, this is a cheap way of meeting all of these things. Because the internships that we offer to students are really uh, nothing in terms of the university but they they provide so much to the student and we want to give them student opportunities for employment. Um, but they also sort of give so much to the university in opening up data sets and raising awareness of uh, different priorities of the universities like our COVID-19 research. There's a lot of benefits. Anyway, okay. I've, I've yeah. done a rambling, a rambling <laughs> round, the, round the table answer, but sort of like, yeah. Yeah. Um, final question here um, is, I see there is Glam Wikimedia and Residence Network. Are there plans to expand such networks for folks who are working in the education sector? Uh, is that, yeah, we in Poland make a Glam Education Network. Are there plans to, sorry, I'm just reading that again. Oh yeah, Glam WR Network. What no for works working with the education sector? Well, yeah, I mean, I think I'm I'm cautious about sort of creating more and more different platforms. Uh, I think less is more sometimes, and I think there. I mean, if you have like something like the Wikipedia and Education Group, that is our vehicle for Wikimedia's in residence. And there's also the Ren Network as well. I think that might be. Unless there's a, a, a demonstrable need for creating a new network, I don't know that we, we should probably just work with the ones we've got. Yeah, uh, community of practice within the user group. Um, yeah. So it's Silesha suggesting there. I think that sounds like a good uh, a good idea. Um, so I, I want to, in the interest of time, wrap up here because I know we are coming up on time, but thank you all for your participation and a special thanks to you and for a great presentation. Um, I will definitely be poking around that website. I, I poked around it a while ago and I haven't come back to it in a while. So uh, it's it's gotten even better uh, since I last looked at it and um, some, some really impressive work that you guys are doing there with Wikidata and very inspirational. So thank you for the, the great talk and um and thank you all for participating a reminder again we'll send an email out to the member list but if you haven't already please do go ahead and vote and if you are interested in um in not just re-electing the five of us but potentially adding um Bukula or swapping um out someone please feel free to click no and write in the uh, the names of the people you'd like to vote for on the second one all right well, thank you, everyone, and I appreciate all of uh, your participation in our meetings. I think we will probably, um, I, I will say, I think our 
efforts in the user group will be probably focused on planning the EduWiki conference. And so I think it's unlikely we're going to have open meetings for the next few months. I think the those of us um, on the board will be busy working on getting us all together in person um, in, in Belgrade in, in April or May. And so um, I look forward to hopefully seeing some of you there then instead. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.